Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. LaFanya Jones, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, and Dr. Michelle Walls. Now don't get it twisted. We're not going to be your stereotypical therapist. What we will be is down to earth, informative, a little spicy, and vulnerable. All right, interns, turn up the volume, grab your pen and paper. It's supervision time. As a reminder, this podcast is not meant to take the place of a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Welcome back to session 12, All Strings Attached. Okay, interns. So today what we're going to discuss is codependency. And basically what codependency is, is a, an excessive emotional and psychological reliance on your partner. It's a one-sided type of relationship. And it's really one person, one person meeting the needs of another person without taking yourself into consideration. Mm-hmm. What do you ladies think? <laughs> <laughs> I see it a lot in session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that rescuer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Pops out. If anything, the double co- codependency. Oh, wow. Mm. Never thought of it like that. Well, because I have a set of clients that they do it towards each other. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's like they just can't leave each other alone. Uh, I've been seeing the young lady for off and on for some time. And... Um, I've seen the man maybe a handful, but for some strange reason, they just cannot leave each other alone. And they both have this, you know, dynamic where one person stokes the fire of the other. And then here comes the other one to, you know, Mm -hmm. put that blaze out. And then the one that had the, the blaze put out then stokes the fire in the other one. And then they just keep it going in this, you know, vicious cycle with each other. They become relying on the. The on habits. the fire mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like i'm i have purpose even though your purpose should never be in someone else mm-hmm. and that's that's the the one thing that i i don't believe our clients understand is that their emotions are contingent on someone else's emotion like if you come home and you're in a bad mood then that means i got to be in a bad mood mm-hmm. yeah there has to be some boundaries like we've talked about several times but you, it stops the dysfunction that goes on in the relationships and a lot of times people are too worried about keeping status quo or not allowing the person to feel abandoned or neglected or, or whatever a mm-hmm. myriad of emotions instead of just saying okay this is not what we're going to do yeah. you know well and then people get used to and I'll I'll speak on my specialty area, which is addiction, (laughs) (laughs) because actually codependency has been around for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, it started out for uh, spouses of alcoholics. It was called Mm co-alcoholics before it became codependency, but they, they become reliant on the dysfunction, the chaos, the tornadoes, Mm -hmm. the storms, you know, they Mm -hmm. become reliant on those. So they don't know how, especially for, co-alcoholics I'll call them they they don't know how to when the addict end up going the rehab or something like that they don't know how to function in normalcy Mm -hmm. what for some people it's boring oh yes Mm -hmm. you know as much as I hate the drama (laughs) it's life yeah Mm -hmm. drama is life Mm -hmm. and I when When my hat, when I have family members to say that, well, I'm, you know, I'm bored now. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to, you know, function. And I I have to remind them, you sound just like an addict because a lot of times addicts will say they re they relapse because they're bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's something in the thrill. Yes. You know, I believe codependency is the result of trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just keep going and keep going until the well typically if we're talking about addiction (laughs) (laughs) typically it's until something horrible happens to the addict you don't always see the codependent person 
um, you know, make some changes and do something different because it's so like we talked about in a previous session, it's so hard to watch them go through that and feel like I didn't do all that I could have done. And in reality, they're doing this to themselves. You are the support system. You're the backup. You're not, you're not wow. first string. The backup. <laughs> wow. Speaking of all strings attached. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like how you just threw that in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. That's so true though. Yeah. They're the backup. I like that because that, you know, although everybody doesn't want to be the star, everybody doesn't want to be the lead to be the backup in a relationship is dysfunctional in itself because that means I don't have a partner. I have someone who I Mm -hmm. am, who's leading me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of this is even highlighted more for the person that has that kind of rescuer slash saver mentality anyway, you know, because you cannot necessarily come into a relationship being that way, but become that way just through the dynamics of you and your partner. But for a person that's already, Mm-hmm. a a rescuer by nature you know this it's a very could potentially dangerous situation to mm-hmm. be involved in well and i was gonna say i don't believe people obviously become codependent overnight this has been a this has been years of development usually from my population usually they started off being codependent as a child and so mm-hmm. now it's just it looks different yeah. and it's been carried on into their in, into their adulthood. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a throwback to what we were talking about with uh, addiction and family members, mm-hmm. you know, that need to protect the addict, mm-hmm. you know, protect them from themselves, protect them from the, the others, protect them from society. You know, they, they need that kind of, um, wrap around or shelter from the world. Yeah, they they're constantly making sacrifices in the relationship, mm-hmm. and they, and typically it's themselves, their mm-hmm. emotions, their thoughts, their opinions, their concerns. It's that's they're the ones that's being sacrificed. Mm-hmm. I think even in those individuals who didn't have that in the home, you have to realize that you teach people how to treat you. And so that person who is the addict or the, the one that is not the codependent person is training their significant other or whoever in the, in the relationship, how they want to be treated. And they, they want someone who is codependent and doing those things for them and helping them get the things that give them that dopamine high and all that other kind of stuff. And so that's why you have to kind of know what foundation you stand on, what your boundaries are before you entertain other people, because it's easy to get swayed because you love them. You have strong feelings towards them. So you're like, Oh no, I should do this. And da 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 da. But in reality, no, you, you done crossed over your boundary and a boundary and you all up in a business. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I, for whatever reason, people don't tend to realize that they're codependent. I, I mean, I'm sure you all have, have done the same thing. I've called out so many family members that's codependent Mm -hmm. and they like, what? "Mm, uh Uh-huh. But yet you're sitting here telling me you feel trapped in the relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one sign. You guys, the first three that I'm going to name are, do you feel trapped in your relationship, which we kind of elaborated on already. And then are you uh, constantly making sacrifices in your relationship And then this third one that I wanted to say is, do you spend more energy meeting your partner's need than your own? You know, I'll go ahead and play. I was just going to say that's (laughs) (laughs) self-explanatory. It is, you know, but that one about, do you meet your partner's needs more than your own? I, that one I feel is so subtle, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a very, because it goes back to kind of what you were saying, Dr. Wall, you know, you want to help your partner, Mm -hmm. you want them to achieve, you want them to be happy, and you want them to, you know, go through life without hurt. Mm -hmm. So it feels natural to put yourself in a position to help them in any way you can, which is also another thing that 
just our society at large says that you should be doing in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at all the movies that we watch and the TV shows where people are constantly putting (laughs) themselves in positions to be taken advantage of, um, or used in some way or, um, you know, but I don't even know any other kind of way you could be used or taken advantage of. (laughs) However, (laughs) You know, it's something that we see a lot of. It's, you know, so when we're dealing with people, it's innate in us. Yeah. And I think we have a, there's a thin line between me caring for you and me nurturing you and being codependent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why a lot of people don't realize that that's what they're in Mm -hmm. because they think it's just a part of my personality. I just love taking care of people. (laughs) I just love nurturing people. I'm just kind. I'm just, you know, that's just my personality Mm -hmm. where if we think about it, that came from something. We learned that some kind of way Mm -hmm. and you have to determine whether or not regardless, even if it was healthy, because you can be codependent and just you just had a, a a parent or caregiver that was ill and you had to take care of them growing up. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, substance related. It, most of the time it is, but it can be something else. Mm-hmm. And so e- either either way, it's still unhealthy and we still have to look at the personality that we developed based on how we grew up. I think part of, you know, one of the things about looking at your personality kind of based off how you grew up, it, we've said this before that it's going to play out in your relationships, whatever, you know, residual stuff Mm -hmm. that is still there, you're going to try to unconsciously work that out. So if you had to caretake, you know, just like you were saying, it doesn't necessarily have to be a substance abuse Mm -hmm. issue. If it was, I had a sick care, uh, a sick, sick caregiver then i i'm going to continue to be that nurture overly nurturing mm-hmm. you know um or you may go the complete opposite in and then become more of a dismissive but oh, yeah. you know you're you're gonna fall in one of those two camps because your experience has taught you that oh no being solely someone's all in all is just too much for me and i can't do it or man, this is exactly what I need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, this is my calling and this is the the best way that I can show my love is to pour all of myself into you. Mm-hmm. I was reading some article. I can't remember uh, who wrote it, but they were saying there are two types of relationships or two types of people um, when you deal with uh, codependency. And they said those in denial and those in recovery. so we all have elements of that within us I think it's just part of our nature and you as Dr. Strickland was saying you really have to make sure that you're showing up how you need to show up and not in a way that's going to cause yourself harm yeah Mm -hmm. yeah you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and a lot and uh, that's the piece that's missing a lot of people extend the help. They extend their time. They extend their um, availability to people who don't. It's not reciprocal. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. All relationships should be mutually beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the way you said that. I know. <laughs> Put that emphasis out there. Yes. Yes. But true. The hard part is. They're usually not. <laughs> They're usually nope. not. You know, to find that rare relationship where it is, mm-hmm. you know, it almost seems those are the ones that people think are weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's like, why you, y'all so close? And why y'all you communicate well? It, right. What? Ew. I have a friend and y'all, y'all know her. I'm not going to blast her name out or anything, but I have a friend and her ex-boyfriend used to always say, oh, y'all have got to be lesbians because mm. y'all are always around each other. And I was like, or we're just good friends and we have healthy boundaries and we like each other. Mm-hmm. I don't know what dysfunctional relationships you grew up with, but this ain't that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that's because we're not taught how to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, we get our 
mentorship or you know views of relationships from the people around us Mm -hmm. because our families are our first teachers so if Mm -hmm. you grew up in a very you know chaotic household with lots of screaming and yelling and throwing things or name calling or very insulting kind of jokes Mm -hmm. you know these are things that you're going to carry over into your friendships carry over into your romantic relationships because that's your first set of you know teaching Mm-hmm. And learning about how to be with other people. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not taught how to express your needs, your wants and desires, mm. you won't know how to do that when you become an adult and have, you know, friendships, relationships of any kind, because that's not something you were taught. Mm-hmm. So you run from it mm-hmm. or it's the way it's expressed is unhealthy, you know? And I think that's another thing to be aware of for codependent people is that difficulty in expressing your emotions. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, you know, codependent people feel like what they think and what they feel is wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they will, again, it's all about caretaking the other person. So I'm going to cower down or I'm going to crush my feelings down into this tight little ball because, you know, well, how dare I? Yeah. Yeah. How dare I make your life uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's almost this fear of taking up space when you're, when you're codependent. And, you know, something that I have learned through my, you know, yoga practice is that you have to allow yourself to take space. It's okay for you to hold space for other people and to be someone who is supportive, but you also have to take space for yourself. How are you showing up? How are you walking in your own life? Because a lot of times we don't pay attention to that until it's we're laid out on the floor somewhere. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. That low self-esteem is, is crucial. People who are codependent, they definitely feel like they're not good enough. Like they compare themselves to other people all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is combined with that feeling of please like me. Mm -hmm. Please love me. Please love me. Mm -hmm. You know, am I good enough now? Mm -hmm. Now? How about now? 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 Yeah. You know, they just keep (laughs) (laughs) they just keep doing it Mm -hmm. because there's the again, that low self-esteem and they just cannot seem to break free of that. Yeah. And then combined with that is the people pleasing part, you Mm -hmm. know, and what people pleasing is, is basically pleasing someone you care about um, in an unhealthy way. Like you, you, you saying no causes you to have anxiety. Mm-hmm. Y'all know it's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Own that. Don't run from it. It's a complete sentence. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand that you have a choice. You can say yes or you can say no. If you want to say no, then say no. Mm-hmm. Don't infringe on your own rights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, something that I work on with some of my clients that have struggles with assertiveness is the soft no Mm -hmm. or um, like the art of saying no without actually using the word no. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that Mm -hmm. one. That's my that's the one that I use a lot. (laughs) Uh, So one of the examples that I give is, no, if your boss comes up to you and says, hey, can you do this project? But you really either don't have the time or you don't want to saying something, you know, who's really good at doing (laughs) spreadsheets dr jones i think she would be a great resource for you to get that done so i've communicated i don't want to do this Mm -hmm. and i don't plan on doing it Mm -hmm. but i've given you a solution to be able to do that so it may take the other person a second to realize like oh wait a minute you just told me you're not gonna do this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i didn't say no (laughs) but you got the implied no Mm -hmm. so it gives you a way to be able to still assert yourself without feeling because there's something that I don't know why people feel the word no is so confrontational because we allow society to dictate what we can think and what we can do. We, uh, y'all, I can't stress this enough because I have to say it a whole lot to my clients. I, I mean, I think I probably said it all week. You, we give social media society and anybody else, so much power over our thoughts, mm-hmm. our behavior, our our opinions. Yeah, that it, it. I'm like, why are you giving so much power to people? You don't even know society. <laughs> <laughs> who is they? Yes, who is they? 
and you care to, <laughs> you care so much about they like mm-hmm. I don't even understand that I wonder complete side note I wonder how that became a thing well you know what they say uh, <laughs> you know we're gonna look it up y'all that because mm-hmm. that's just how we are we're gonna look that up how did like, they become important yeah like my sarcastic buzz like what did they say <laughs> like <laughs> y'all I just be so mm-mm, no I'm good I think it's the zenial in me but I possibly can't, I can't do it <laughs> <laughs> But that was just a side note. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. was just thinking about that. So it, to get us back on the boundary, I mean, codependency, I often say boundaries because boundaries, poor boundaries is a part <laughs> of codependency. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so we, we had a session on uh, boundaries before. And the one thing that I believe with codependence is that their boundaries are easily trampled over. You know, mm-hmm. it, it they don't even have boundaries most of the time. Their boundary is the other person. Like, you are my mm-hmm. boundary. Mm. Enmeshment 101. I don't know where you end and where I begin. Yep. Mm-hmm. So and we just a continuate, continuated line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's not a healthy way to look at life. Yes, um, if you're a couple, y'all are a unit, of course. But at the same time, you still have you. They still have them. Y'all are two different people. It shouldn't all be about anybody. Both of y'all are bringing, should be, be bringing stuff to the table. (laughs) Well, it's like, because you guys know I'm a visual person. It's like a Venn diagram. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, for people that don't remember what Venn diagrams are. So when you have two circles and they overlap just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's basically you in a relationship. So there's parts of you that, that are completely separate, Mm -hmm. but then there's a section of you two that overlap with one another. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. where people get messed up. Mm -hmm. Cause you you let the, I'm sorry. You let the circles overlap completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. I got a couple that you need to say that to right now. And cause I'd be like, <laughs> y'all jokers are all, and I say this to them all the time. Y'all are in each other's lanes. Get mm-hmm. out of each other's lanes. Stop it. Mm-hmm. You say one thing and you're like, no, it's okay. You don't have to do it because I know you don't really want to do it when they ro- want to do it. Mm. If you don't get somewhere and sit down. Yeah. Y'all yeah. not going to be in couples therapy for 22 years. So I'm not, <laughs> y'all going to have to go somewhere else. I got to have some boundaries. Okay. Because <laughs> there's some couples out there like that. It's like, you need a permanent therapist. Yeah. Well, we're going to rotate them. Like, I'm going to take them for <laughs> summer. Y'all, and somebody else can have them for fall. <laughs> then somebody else can have them for spring. Oh, man. When a, like, we're going to have to rotate them so they can just get a little bit of everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, another one is reactivity you know mm-hmm. 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 I was just thinking about that because mm-hmm. uh, I have had not have I had a couple that was codependent but in an angry way mm. you know they weren't codependent in the like oh I you know the sweet like, well I just I just want to take care of them and I just love them but no they were codependent in that they like screamed and fought and just mm-hmm. the description I gave to them I said you know some couples are of course everyone's different so we're not all again overlapping Mm -hmm. but some couples are oil and vinegar Mm -hmm. if you shake up oil and vinegar you can make something that tastes great there are some couples (laughs) that are oil and water and it don't matter how much you shake that stuff up it's never going to come together to make something good Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were oil and water Mm. and they kept trying to convince themselves that they were oil and vinegar didn't even have no seasoning did it none (laughs) <laughs> not even a sprinkle of salt no and it took <laughs> them almost two years to finally get to a point where they finally separated mm. wow because they just they could not let each other go and it, it was it was the weirdest dynamic because when we think about codependency we usually think of you know a very the stereotype that comes to mind is a more meek mild-mannered person mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. these two were codependent in this super aggressive way with one another I think there is a rigidity in codependency. Like the goal is to keep them Mm -hmm. instead of the goal being to be healthy and (laughs) be okay, that that sort of thing. So there's this rigidity and it's like, no, I I, I must get this together or I must do this or you not going blah, blah, blah. Like it's, 
on both sides it's like Mm -hmm. they are so digging their heels into the relationship that they can't see anything else yeah yes yeah that describes them to a t (laughs) (laughs) and that's the thing with with the reactivity you react to the feelings and thoughts of other people yeah you you absorb it and you take it in and you believe that it's true because you you don't have no you don't have any boundaries i can say you don't have no boundaries (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean that's it too (laughs) you know what this reminds me of and this is kind of tangential um when you are telling a story and then somebody that you know start telling your story with you but they weren't there for the story but just because they they've heard it before they want to tell your i'm like no you (laughs) you don't know what i'm about to say (laughs) hush I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Or you, or even in therapy, I have a client who does this all the time. Like I'm talking to her. She's asked me a question. She finishing my sentences, but she not saying the words I'm saying. And I'm like, <laughs> what is happening in this session? Just take a breath. So oh, ground yourself. Breathe in and out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, so another one is caretaking. And we kind of hit on this one just a little bit, mm-hmm. yeah. but you want to help people to the point of you giving up yourself. And the one thing, one of the examples that I can think of is in addiction, the codependent tends to get so mm, lost in the addiction mm-hmm. that so say for instance, they get up, they go to work, they're calling home to make sure the other person wakes up to go to work. So when that person finally wakes up, which they're probably late at this point, well, I left you some Gatorade and some Tylenol on the desk so that you can take it. And since you're late, I'm just going to call your boss for you. And I'll just let them know that you're going to be, you know, two hours late. Well, you know what? No, just go ahead and go to sleep. And I'll just tell them that you're not feeling well. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are certain tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R period F-M. Ooh, hover on 10. Ooh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hover on 100. Yeah, that's <laughs> because in no way is that healthy. It's no. one thing to check and see if they're okay. How are you doing? Or even if you did leave the Gatorade out, like you left the Gatorade out, like you, you don't have to keep going back and forth about the situation. There is a difference between loving your significant other or loving the person in your life and doing the stuff for them. Like this is not a quadriplegic person. <laughs> it's so funny you say that. Cause I was thinking you cripple the other person. Oh yeah. yeah. Because you're codependent with them, but then they become dependent on you. And mm-hmm. I tell my family members that all the time, addicts depend on you more than they make you believe that they are. Mm-hmm. You think that you're dependent on that and they manipulate you to think that you're dependent on them. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the sad part of all of the addiction things is when I hear about children who find their parent passed out, and they've either done something on themselves or vomited mm-hmm. and they clean it up and clean them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they, you know, give them, you know, clean them up and give them a blanket and sheet and pillow and let them. I, mm-mm, no, ma'am. Sometimes you and have sir, to lay in your stuff. You, you need to clean you need, it up yourself. I'm yeah. going to make sure you ain't going to like drown in it or right. nothing like that. But that's you. The problem with codependency a lot of times is that there's no consequences to yes. the addict's behavior. It's yeah. it's okay if they bump their head. 
it's okay need, if they fall. I was yeah. going to say, they probably need to. Yeah, just bam, knock them <laughs> <out>. <laughs> You know, you, yes. can, you can't keep saving them from themselves. They, they are them. Yeah. Like how you save somebody that's them. Like they don't mm. even make no type of sense. They, make it make sense. They have to care enough about themselves to to take care of themselves yes. as, or save themselves, as you said. Mm-hmm. They have to care enough about themselves. You You can't care about them more than them because they they are them yeah <laughs> and if you do want to you know take that role you may need, may need to take that role and take a step back you can help without being all up in the business yeah. it's yeah. way it's different it is multiple ways to do the same thing yeah I but agree. you know they got their dun 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 music playing in the background <laughs> the hero here i come <laughs> to save the day to save, yeah <laughs> you know they got all their stuff playing ready to go because yeah. you need me mm-hmm. but, but see, i need you because mm-hmm. where would i be who would i be without you if you didn't need me mm-hmm. yourself <laughs> right but then who was that you know say And that's, you know, some of my clients that have gotten out of, you know, very dependent driven relationships. That's what one of the major things that we work on first is, well, who Mm -hmm. are you? Because you have that role. So you have all these roles that you you live under. Mom, sister, coworker, employee, friend, Wife, wife, you know, but then it's who's the man and who's the woman. So who are you now that these roles especially the codependent one now that this role is gone do you even know who you are or who you want to be Mm -hmm. and what's going to fill that spot or is that spot just going to be closed yeah and so another part of that is that control like Mm y'all were kind of just hitting on Mm -hmm. codependents feel safe and secure when they can control things which is why they can't let go yeah because that control limits their ability to take risks Mm -hmm. and it, it puts them in that position to where, okay, so if I call and make sure he got to work or he's up, then I know he got to work, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or I know he took the Tylenol cause he answered the phone and he said, okay, yeah, I just, I just took it. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a very child and parent relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, there's such a hierarchy there. The funny thing is the hierarchy, like we've said before, is the the codependent person is really the one with all the power in reality. However, yeah. they have convinced themselves that they have none. Yes, they. Yes, but they've also been manipulated and gas gas lit <laughs> gas lighted it is. Yeah. <laughs> gas light lit into thinking that they don't have the power or any power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of like BDSM when people think that the sadist is the one with all the power. And it's like, no, the Dom. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I had Sorry. a whole, let I, me get, use the more correct term nowadays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the well, dominant, you know, I, when, Dr. Jones was saying that that's Amelia. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a sex therapist. Y'all. So when she said that, it's like, oh, that's power play in the negative. So, <laughs> you know, if you know anything about that world, then you already know the submissive has all the power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The person doing the activity is the dom. But as soon as the submissive is not okay with something, they are supposed to let their dominant know immediately the only thing that is similar is the fact that the guesswork is taken out the Mm -hmm. submissive does not have to guess and that's why you see a lot of people who are um in power positions alpha males alpha females who prefer to be submissives when they're in their relationships you know if y'all y'all want to hear more about that we'll talk about that later but you know (laughs) I heard a resounding yes <laughs> from the peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah, we got questions. <laughs> but that'll be uh, another topic for another day. Mm-hmm. For certain. <laughs> <laughs> now back to your regularly scheduled program. Uh, so, you know, so then what, what have you guys seen as, the biggest or most severe form of 
codependency? Like, how far does it go? Like, what's the ultimate? Well, you know, I have several because I, because of the population I work with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people, you know, paying thousands upon thousands of dollars to get people out of jail or paying bond, you know, or like I said, the cleaning up of the vomit and, you know, everything else or lying to the bosses. I know you asked one, but I have several. (laughs) Do you guys think that the, it ever leads to the codependent person, um, you know, deciding upon suicide? Implode, explode. Yeah. I have a client in, in y'all know and love her. Her, um, but this particular client um, was just in a toxic relationship, and it wasn't that there was any addiction in it, but there, uh, it was codependency there, and you could tell that he was always gaslighting her. You could tell that there was a a high level of manipulation going on, and it wasn't until for the five hundredth time that he had come back that he ended up having a child on her while Mm -hmm. he was talking to her and trying to convince her to give him another chance that she was finding like, I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't look at this child in his face and the child look like my child and be okay with this situation. And so it still took, you know, a substantial amount of time for all boundaries to kind of be put in place and for her to feel good at what she was doing because there there's this misconception that you have to feel great about what you're doing and that's not real if if you love this person it's going to take a while before your codependency has healthy habits you know that's that whole denial and recovery thing I was talking about earlier when you're in recovery regardless of how you feel you still do what you're what you need to do for health reasons Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so one of my examples would be addiction related. It was a uh, group that I was facilitating once. And there was a lady in there who said that she was the one, I guess, kind of funding her son's addiction. Mm. So what happened was he came to her and asked her for money to get his drugs. And she remembered the last, um, funding that she did was the drugs that he used that killed himself mm. or that killed him. And yeah. you talking about guilt. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a different level. Yeah. And that's one of the things I ask in my couples, especially when it's addiction, are you the one funding everything? Are you the primary breadwinner? What's going on? I have a couple right now where the one significant other hasn't worked in over um, a year. And I was like, well, how is your partner getting the drugs? I don't know how they're getting it. Do they have access to your bank account? Like, what's what's going on? Mm-hmm. And finally understood, okay, I am in some type of way, whether I gave a couple of dollars here or a couple of, a couple of dollars there, I'm funding this situation and they are hiding it from me. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about this on the last session where you, you bargain and you make these other rules. Okay. Well, if you're going to use, make sure you bring it back to the house Mm -hmm. and use it here. So I can watch you. I'm like, uh, no, how about now? We're not doing that at all. Get your life together. Either you want the drugs or you want this. Mm -hmm. And if you want the drugs, I'm going to have to be okay with that because that's what you're choosing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to try to convince you to do something different. Right. Right. And the the thing is, I've, I've had to use that example with the lady, Mm -hmm. um, several times for especially parents, Mm -hmm. because typically, you know, it's a parental situation where Mm -hmm. you're giving your child money, like not only so, And I hate, I have to put it that harsh because they need to understand like, okay, so what if your money is the money that they used to get their last hit that killed them Mm -hmm. or drink that killed them? Yeah. You know, not, not only are you going to have to grieve your child or significant other from death. Now you got to deal with the guilt because your money was the money that purchased it. Yeah. Ooh, Mm -mm, that's a lot. 
That's why anybody in my family who or friend group that may have had something like that go on. You need me to get you some groceries. You need me to get you some food. Like right. I, I will help you in the way that I can help you and still sleep at night. I'm not giving you no money, so don't ask me. Yeah, <laughs> right. And you know what? And although I think that's a better boundary to have. However, I tell parents again, mm -hmm. don't. Why are you buying them groceries? You freeing their money up to go buy them some drugs or mm -hmm. alcohol mm -hmm. or whatever you know Ooh, that's on the flip side yep. yeah but e like i said that's a healthier mm -hmm. boundary th that you're not going to give them money and you go buy them groceries mm -hmm. but it's still you're still freeing some money up for them yeah it yeah. shouldn't be something that you're doing on a regular basis because they should be self-sufficient and if they're exactly. not self-sufficient then you know a different dynamic needs to take place like mm -hmm. if this is actually somebody that you have to take care of then it should be a, a different set of dynamics going on but yeah that should be an occasional okay hey i ran out of something can, blah 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 okay i can go get that for you i can instacart that to your house i can do that <laughs> instacart <laughs> <laughs> how times have changed oh my gosh <laughs> what do you think it is that finally kind of wakes up inside of the codependent when they're like you know what <laughs> that's it bruh you know, what do you think are some of the like things that lead up to finally getting to that point? Death. Mm -hmm. That's the most extreme one. Death. Yeah. And I, I hate to. Uh, yes, it is the most. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but me. Beep, beep. Because. Toot, toot. I, <laughs> uh, beep, beep. beep. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why I say me. Um, is because a lot of times I call that out mm -hmm. and it's I'm sure to them it feels like a slap in their face punch in the stomach something but I still call it out accountability mm -hmm. because it, you know if you're not around people that's going to hold you accountable and even if you sometimes they have people around them that will be like why are you still giving him money or her money or whatever mm -hmm. but it's different when you hear someone that has no attachment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm calling it out because I don't know anything about your life other than what you're telling me. Right. Yeah. And so for me to call it out or someone like me, a mental health provider, it well, for us to call that out. That's a, that's, that's like, Ooh, oh, mm, okay. I need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've all had moments like that with clients with like, Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, 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 uh, that light bulb go off. Yeah. yeah. I had a client say that this week. She said, I had an epiphany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was just from one question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I had an epiphany. Like, oh, well, I'm glad you did. I yeah. had one of my Because please don't ask me that. Say whatever it is I just said again. Yeah. Because I don't remember. <laughs> at all. It's gone. <laughs> I had one of my clients tell me at this week's session that she, <laughs> she didn't know if she wanted to come to session this week because last week I snatched all her edges. And I was like, <laughs> well, you should have pressed them. I wouldn't have to snatch them. I, I have <laughs> some edge control on. My client that I see on Friday morning, she always, I, we do Zoom, and she always trying to find the hang up button on me. <laughs> Where is that? How can I hang up on you? <laughs> you can't. I know. <laughs> see, that's because you need to hear this message. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I believe another one would be dysfunctional communication. We kind of talked about it a little bit already, mm -hmm. but dysfunctional, they're, they're afraid to say the truth, their truth, mm -hmm. because they're afraid of upsetting someone. Yeah. They're afraid that the, I'm just going to say addict. They're afraid that the addict is going to leave them if they're truthful. Mm -hmm. The addict needs you. <laughs> yeah. Or they got to have one lined up ready mm -hmm. and that's not typically how that goes you know because just just because you're the non-addict and co possibly more, more than likely codependent they're codependent too yeah mm -hmm. they they need you mm -hmm. it's the what you call it double codependent mm -hmm. it, yeah and that's a that's a hard one that's a very hard dynamic to deal with, you know, as a therapist, because you have two sets of people essentially doing the same thing to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but they both believe they're not worthy, but they believe the other person is worthy. <laughs> they both have low self-esteem. They both have trouble communicating their wants, their needs, their frustrations and, and the such. 
You know, they both feel that they are responsible to the other person. Yet you're doing it in this way that's just completely messing both of you up. Mm-hmm. Yes. We don't like to start having conferences on yes. this, these yeah. type of topics because I feel like we <laughs> we almost have to do it in a group setting for everybody to get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think we all can probably think of our own caseload and each other's caseload where we got clients like this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't even know what else to tell y'all. Y'all mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. y'all want to stay stuck. And at some point when it's extreme situations as their therapist, we have the right to say, okay, well, I'm going to discontinue couples because mm-hmm. this is yeah. no longer healthy for you or me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like, I, I just got spaced out because I'm like, they think we don't have that that right. <laughs> they like they think we got poor boundaries too, and that mm-hmm. we can't see this unhealthiness right here. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> y'all should have saw my face uh, look at Doctor Strickland because we share a uh, yeah a severely codependent client mm-hmm. uh, set Couple. of clients. Oh, they're not even co- okay. Yeah. yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, we can't get into the details. Of course, y'all. As much as we would love to, we. You we know, because we <laughs> like doing what we do for a living. We right. Can't tell you all the details. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, we have we share a severely codependent couple um, or ex couple. I don't even know what to describe them as. But <laughs> it is very hard to watch the these two individuals self-destruct mm-hmm. and then annihilate one another. Yeah. You wish you could put them in relationship jail. Or something, you know, like you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Like clank, clank. Don't yeah. pass go or collect or don't pa- <laughs> don't collect your two hundred dollars. You got to go straight back to jail or something. Like we got to we got to figure this thing out. We got to brainstorm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I so agree. Yeah, because because the thing is the another unhealthiness to this is that they obsess over. <laughs> I should have saw Doctor Wall's face. <laughs> yeah, I got big eyes, and I just. They, I bugged them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my nerves be bad, y'all. Like I've told the interns this several times. I'm very calm, cool, collected, laid back. So that obsessive energy that comes into a session, it tears my nerves up. And I'm like, why are y'all doing this? There's an easy way around this. Can we please not? <laughs> well you know the thing with the couple that you know dr jones was talking about that we share you know i one thing that i told my person was you're addicted to your former spouse Mm. Mm -hmm. and you know he was like what yeah you you already have addictive tendencies just in general you're addicted to this person Mm -mm. yeah i mean it's it's you know when you cannot see yourself without another person that is a i mean if there was another thing other than red flags yeah yeah. that would be it Mm -hmm. you just replace the person with cocaine i can't see myself without cocaine would would that be okay so Mm -hmm. you saying that you can't see yourself without this person that we don't need that level of love we talked about this (laughs) on the love episode that is mania that is an unhealthy yes. form of love when it is sustained for long periods of time. Mm-mm. It's past unhealthy. <laughs> I don't even know what the next level would be. Toxic. <laughs> I know. What's beyond toxic? <laughs> Radioactive? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> All I keep hearing is songs in my head. As y'all say, this. I had Britney Spears, then I had the Radioactive song. Yes. <laughs> And both of them, I mean, and not, not speaking about this particular set of clients, but just in general, you know, both of them are just lost. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a a forgotten piece of all of this in codependencies. They're both just lost. They don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, as a codependent person, not particularly for this couple, but well, yeah for the couple too but we just haven't gotten there yet (laughs) that that you have to begin to focus on is learning who you are at your core like dr strickland was saying earlier learn who you are at your core and those things may have changed those things may have developed those things may not be clear because a lot of times when we look at our core values we see that there can be some gray 
you know, Mm -hmm. and sometimes we get confused because there is gray and it's like, well, how do I believe this? But this can happen. So then how, so then you just go with the, you go with what you believe. You go with what the core value is. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, I was just looking over some of the research um, for codependency and one of the things they're talking about here is the late stage of codependent behavior mm-hmm. and how that leads to depression. Mm. Mm. That's accurate. You mm-hmm. know, that once, so when I was asking a little bit earlier, like kind of what are the, the catalysts or the pushes for codependent people to like get out of the situation? You know, I'm thinking they become depressed at some point because you get tired Oh yeah, and then you either isolate or withdraw, or you seek some sort of assistance, and that may start with friends and family. Mm -hmm. And then once they've kind of reached their ability for whatever they can do, they may, you know, hopefully suggest that you go get you know professional help. But I was just thinking about you know the codependent does become depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I can see that. Like you said, it's 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 exhausting to continue to focus on someone else and their behaviors and their thoughts. Like it's almost like you're living in your body, but you're trying to live someone else's life. Yeah. It actually is that. (laughs) Yeah. I'm trying to live in my body, but I got a remote control for your body, Mm -hmm. but the remote control is actually controlling my body. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, it's controlling yours. It's this weird twisted you know idea yeah but you but the thing the other uh caveat to that is Mm -hmm. let yourself change yes you know rather than trying to change other people let yourself change because when you are constantly trying to change other people that's how you get exhausted yeah this also reminds me you know i talk a to you and I talk about this a lot when I work with parents about parenting from a sense of fear Mm -hmm. and parenting from a place of guilt. Uh, I think the codependent lives from both of those places as well. Mm -hmm. They live in a state of fear and they live in a state of guilt Mm -hmm. all the time. So, you know, there's always this veil over everything that they do. So, you know, learning how to not be afraid to be you not being afraid to let someone down. Mm-hmm. Let them down. Maybe <laughs> okay, be strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, resist that urge to fix it or control it or save it. Because in reality, you can't. There's nothing literally. Because when, when I used to do group and the kids would say, well, they made me mad or they made me this. Mm-hmm. And I said, how? Mm-hmm. how did did they walk over and put their fa- hands on your face and, and make your face start frowning <laughs> how did they make you become upset tell me what did they actually do that made you mm-hmm. be upset I used, to use, I used to use that with my kids all the time <laughs> girl they used to hate it and then well over time they will learn like okay well they didn't make me upset mm-hmm. but their behavior influenced me <laughs> <laughs> to feel a certain way mm-hmm. um but taking ownership of you, mm-hmm. you know, you can't give up your control in all of these different ways and expect things to turn out beautifully. Yeah. Well, to close out this session, we wanted to leave you guys with a quote by Steve Maraboli. It reads, you can put all your effort in trying to make someone happy. But there comes a time when we become tired of trying to fill a bucket that is leaking from the inside. Must be this volume control. So, okay, interns, process your notes. Be sure to catch us next session and find us on all major platforms at The Recycled Podcast. If you're a new intern, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. And remember... We are shifting and reshaping our psyche through healing conversations and connections, one discussion at a time.